Well, just leaving the camp at Middleton in Teesdale. And I've um, got to say that the camp at Middleton in Teesdale is a resounding success. Um, got my phone fully charged. Um, got my bank at three dots. Um, gone to the butchers. I've got three ham sandwiches made out of uh, kind of baguette in my backpack. That looks like so. Um, had the best fish and chips I can remember eating. I mean, absolutely to die for. Watched the football in the clubhouse with uh, Carla Mika um, and Cheryl behind the bar, who was just a right laugh, a really funny Geordie lady. Um, just a great place. Only downside is the midges. Um, they're the most, the most aggressive I've seen midges. Definitely the most aggressive in the morning. I've just been absolutely getting attacked as I put my tent, tent away. Um, but um, I guess they were excited to see a meal before six in the morning. It's not even 6 a.m. yet. It's 5.58 and I'm on my way um, for the best day. Oh yeah, final great thing about the campsite is it's on the Penang Way. It's um, not one of those things where you're going 100 yards or 200 yards past it. No, it's on the Penang Way. So Middleton in Teesdale actually isn't. You'd have to cross the... Um, um, so the campsite's just from where I've just come from. Um, you actually have to cross the bridge to get to um, Middleton in Teesdale. But the Penang Way is just, just here um, by that roadside. So um, it gives you a, you know... Stops you having to do this extra couple of yards, which is nice sometimes. <laughs> I also gave myself a little treat this morning. Um, I bought a pint of milk in the co-op yesterday, which meant that I could have a couple of cups of coffee with milk. Makes a big difference. Um, and then also my porridge with milk this morning as well. It's probably why I feel particularly perky this morning. <laughs> I used about two thirds of the pint and um, left the other third outside of Carl's tent. Um, he said he would be grateful for that in the morning. And uh, Mika said he wasn't bothered. I think being Slovenian, he, they probably drink their black coffee, don't they? So, uh, all good. Milk makes a big difference. Another one of these fields left to meadow. It's quite a lot of these. Um, very nice, it's very nice. So, um, something I'm trying to do today, um, which I mentioned the other day about sort of um, slow walking, slow and steady wins the race. That's my goal today. I've got about 20 miles. Um, it's supposed to be the most beautiful day, so I want to try and go as slowly as I can. I want this to be my longest day. You know, if I see something nice, I'm going to stop. Um, and I'm trying not to go too fast as well. I've got started before six o'clock, so there's plenty, plenty of time. Um, I'm trying to be as controlled about slowing down and lingering and savouring this day as much as I can. Okay, so the plan for day 10. Day 10 already. Um, so it's kind of a day of two halves. Um, I follow the Tees Valley first of all, as you can see in the background. Um, so I'll go past two really um, famous waterfalls. Um, first of all, Low Force, then High Force, which I think is the waterfall with the because volume of water um, in the UK. So that will be something to see. Um, then once you've completed going up the valley, you then sort of cross over the Pennines um, via Calden Snout to down to Dufton. And on the way, you get to see High Cup Nick, which is the kind of glaciated valley, um, which is just spectacular. So every image that you see of the Pennine Way is generally an image of High Cup Nick. So today is generally considered to be the best day of the Pennine Way. Um, it's a long day, it's about 20 miles, but um, I've set off crazy early. So I can really take my time, be slow and enjoy it. There's no benefit to getting to Dufton before sort of six in the evening. There's not much there. So I plan to try and take at least 12 hours just enjoying today. So as we're coming up the Teesdale Valley, we're starting to come across the beginnings of low force. Like a series of, um, of waterfalls. A little cascade. You can probably hear it in the background quite clearly. And this is a very low amount of water coming down the Tees at the moment. Imagine that can get quite powerful. It's very lovely. I'm lucky it's only um, 20 past 7, so I've got low force to myself at the moment. I bet there must be other times when you've got loads of people here. Really a dangerous spot. Makes you wonder if they canoe down this. 
you know, I know you couldn't canoe down high force, which we'll see in a bit, but did you have a go? It was more water maybe. Might be too dangerous. Certainly a lot of rocks. Bit update. Earlier I was suggesting I was at low force. I think there might have been a slight error there, I believe this. It's actually low force. A little bit more of it. It's called the Winch Bridge. Lovely, just for um, low force in the tees. Really nice. It's tricky on low force. It's like you got the first one, then you got the second one, and then it's. I think that's definitely got to be it. <laughs> It's all fenced off. I wonder if it's because of these orchids. It's all fenced off down here. I suspect there's something a bit rare on this time. Oh, um, this, as I can imagine you can see, is high force. Absolutely. And again, that's with very little water. So obviously I'm a big fan of the um, early morning walk, as I sort of talk about quite a lot. It's quiet and the world's fresh and beautiful. But the other big payoff you get is, you know, I've been here for 15, 20 minutes now, not seen anybody else. So you get something as, as beautiful as that to yourself. Now, I'm not saying, you know, I don't like other people and I'm not happy to share, but it is nice having this to yourself. Also, you can see some proper geology happening here. Um, the Pennines, a lot of the northern Pennines are limestone, which is the, the top section of rock. Um, but then the bottom section of rock is different is, is a magma layer that was pushed up from the earth and we're driving that up. But this is where those two areas meet and you can see it quite clearly. Um, the same thing is happening at Adrian's Wall um, when we go after uh, over uh, one of his rigs. Sorry, I can't, I can't remember. Yeah, but it's one of the defining factors of the North Pennine geology. Some people find that interesting. Stephen High Force. Um, just a bunch of, bunch of young girls who are doing the Duke of Edinburgh. I think it's the same ones that I saw in a field yesterday. Um, took a lovely photograph of them um, with the high force in the background, which I think they'll appreciate in the, in the future. It's a pretty good shot. And um, I was saying to them that I did it 32 years ago and hence I'm doing the Panama now. So the better won't take them as long. They'll have a reunion in uh, 10 or 20 years and find that they'll all be doing the Panama together. They seem to like the idea of that. <laughs> that at some point in the future they'll be having a reunion and doing it all over again. Very nice. If you don't like heights, don't look down. Very good. about today that um, is really beautiful and they don't really mention in the books but it might be a bit of a me thing is I love the sense of journey up out of a valley into something other it's like as you leave the valley we're then sort of converting into the, the moorland that's at the head of that valley and it's lovely it's like Lath Kildare I, I love being at Maniash and then where it's a field and then you drop into the limestone valley that is Lathkildale has sort of appeared around um, this has got the same feeling but in reverse it's lovely you, you're one place and you're meandering on a journey to something quite different in um, 
cup of teas down now, just past May's back, which I will see again in a second. Just met a bird watcher to wait a second because he'd, he'd got a, I can't remember what it was said now, <laughs> sunblock. I don't know, and he got it in his sight, so I waited a bit whilst he was viewing it. And um, he's just making his way across the river now to go and carry on what he does. He does bird counts, he's from Dartmoor. Very good. You do meet a lot of interesting people on the Pennock. That's the point we say goodbye to the teas now. Bye bye teas. Everybody, bye teas. Over the moorland now. Um, the sign just there said cauldron snouts only three and a half miles. Seems a bit unbelievable, really. I'm going to need to slow down very soon. Uh, maybe have second lunch. <laughs> At, it's already 10 o'clock. I've already eaten twice. Um, uh, cauldron snout. I might even stop and have a brew. Or just get to hike up Nick and hang out all afternoon. Who knows? It's on and off and on and off with the clothes. I'm going back to the gloves again now that I bought at Keaton's in now. In Thwaite. Lovely spot. Beautiful spot. So we're going to follow this up to Cauldron Snout and kind of over the top and down the other side. Yeah, really lovely. It's wild and beautiful. Well, it's 12 o'clock, so I figured it was time for another waterfall. <laughs> Yay! Just been walking up uh, Maze Beck. Um, with Warren and Chris, they're just making their way up there now. Um, lovely couple of guys. Um, one of them is a retired GP, the other guy is uh, still a GP. Um, thinking about retiring. So um, I just felt that I'd sort of spot, stop for a little bit. I'll probably catch them up again in, in, a, in a while. They seem to be going about the same pace as me. Not a tiny bit slower. Um, and they're following the same route as me for the next couple of days, then I leave ahead. All good. The weather definitely drew in as I got closer to High Cup Nick, so I didn't get the iconic view that everybody sees. But it's not a problem. Um, it's not going to go anywhere, and it gives me a lovely reason to go back one day in the future. <laughs> 